Hello everyone and welcome to the Reigning Greats Kingdom. My name is Elle and today is all about modes of inheritance. But before we get into the video, make sure you go downstairs and click that like button and also don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified whenever I post a new video. So without further ado, let's make it boom. So as I mentioned before, determining modes of inheritance is kind of simple, all it takes is practice. So in this video we are going to practice, but I want to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks to obtain the answer pretty easily. So in this video we're going to cover the basic dominant versus recessive traits, and then in my next video we're going to cover sex linked traits. So let's figure out if this disease is dominant or recessive. To start, we'll do trial and error. But as we go on, you'll be able to start zeroing in on different points in a family tree that are going to give you your answer. So for this example, let's start with recessive. And of course, the individual who expresses the trait is homozygous recessive, and let's fill in everyone else we can. Of course, those two children had to get their second little A from somewhere, so it's from their mom, and that also tells you that their brother, who is not affected, has to be heterozygous as well. Next, to finish the family tree, we have to assume that everyone who marries in is homozygous. So with that, I'll refill in everything that we've already done. I like to do things in my head, but I understand at first that's not really possible. So if you ever want to run a quick Punnett square to check yourself, I highly recommend doing that. And with this Punnett square, you can even see that all the children should be carriers of the gene and shouldn't express it, which means that one sister wouldn't exist, so the answer cannot be recessive. So let's check out dominant this time. Again, we'll start filling in alleles, and of course we have a homozygous recessive child, which means one parent has to be heterozygous, and the two children who are affected have to be heterozygous as well. Then the one woman who married into the family is also homozygous recessive, and the children are pretty easy to fill in. And since this works, that means the answer is dominant. So now let's go on with another example. Again, checking dominance versus recessive traits. Now in this family tree, let's test dominant first because as you can see, there's a lot of orange squares. So we'll start filling in alleles like we always do. Every child of those two parents is heterozygous. The person who marries in is homozygous. The children, we don't really know what they are, but the one woman who does marry off, you can kind of figure out what she is based off of her family. And that's it. Since this works, dominant is a possibility. Now let's test recessive. Then we come to this couple, who in a Punnett square would show us that every child has to be heterozygous, which means that daughter doesn't exist, and so recessive is not a possibility. Then with this next example, we're going to test dominant first and fill in every allele like we have for this entire video. It really doesn't change. Now, filling in the F2 generation is where it gets a little tricky. You see, according to the middle family, those two boys on the end would not exist. And in the third family, the daughter in the middle would not exist, unless of course an affair took place, but that's a little too spicy, so we're just gonna say dominant is not a possibility, and we'll move on to recessive. Now filling in this F1 generation, I kinda really messed up, which I account for later, but it just goes to show you that you can do this all the time and still not get it perfect 100% of the time. But I do correct myself and I do find out that, hey, that middle family is a possibility, which then goes to show that recessive is a possibility for this trait. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that I helped you get an A on your test. Much love always from Elle and I'll see you again soon in the kingdom. <laughs>